According to Kevin O'Leary, when you get a large player over leveraged and it goes to zero, you always get a good bottom. And that's usually where the process of recovery gets started. Welcome to the Investing Wise Academy, a channel where aspiring millionaires and billionaires can learn how to invest wisely. In this video, we're going to talk about Kevin O'Leary's advice. If you're new to our channel, please subscribe to see more videos like this. Let's get started. In the last few weeks, financial markets around the world have fallen as investors seek to protect themselves from a wide range of threats. From the aggressive policy tightening in the United States to the looming threat of a global economic recession. China's prolonged lockdowns as Beijing continues to stick to its zero-coverage strategy are also causing concern, as there is a perception of an economic impact. Some experts and fund managers believe that Mr. Wonderful's recent pledge will not result in a massive crash despite his sell-offs. Among these voices are Kevin O'Leary and his belief that he doesn't foresee a major recession. If you look at what people have been buying with their free money over the last three years, you'll see that the economy is still strong and can withstand the rate hikes, says O'Leary. Kevin O'Leary believes that now is the right time to increase institutional crypto adoption in light of the recent crypto plunge. Cryptocurrency should be regulated like stocks and bonds, so that institutions can gain exposure in the same way. When it comes to cryptocurrency regulation, O'Leary believes that stablecoin is a good place to start because he believes that the USDC has been able to withstand recent volatility because of its cash and short-term treasury bill backing. Take a look at Mr. Wonderful's recent statements. After the massive cryptocurrency sell-off on Monday, there is a great deal of ambiguity regarding what will happen next. The interviewer asked Kevin if he was selling some of these positions or he was adding to his purchases, since he stated that he has 20% of his assets in cryptocurrency. According to Kevin, he's actually averaging down. He added that we need crypto legislation and policy. He stated that if institutional investors allocated 50 basis points to Ethereum and 100 basis points to Solana and Polygon, this is proof that we need crypto legislation and policy. Because we are under-owned by institutions, our stock is extremely volatile and we have seen this before, you would have received a bid instead. Unregulated cryptocurrencies have an inherent tendency to crash. This is nothing new, and the market will eventually bounce back. So Kevin's position is that we should focus on policy in the wake of this. Kevin said, just go back 17 years and look at Amazon's stock price. As people tried to figure out what this new entity was, it also corrected 38-50% to of the time for a period of 12 years straight. As a result, new and native technologies and markets are rife with volatility and the crypto market is no exception. He still thinks it'll be the S&P's 12th sector in 10 or 12 years. We don't know yet what the long-term benefits of these blockchain projects will be because there's so much productivity opportunity in the payment systems and other aspects of this blockchain project. Leverage and non-leverage crypto companies are the two main types. There's also a downside risk when you use leverage to increase your returns on a volatile asset with a high degree of volatility, such as a stock or a currency. Though it's something we hope doesn't happen, getting a major player over leverage and going to zero always gives you a good bottom. And that's usually where the process of recovery gets started. Because it's always leverage that does this. Someone's over-levered positions are complicated. 
opaque and illiquid if they have to be sacrificed. Kevin has no idea who will go to zero, but whoever does, according to him, will serve as a valuable lesson for the rest of us. That's why he enjoys washout events and he believes the crypto spear is overdue for one. Because of previous experience with such high volatility, Kevin doesn't use leverage when trading crypto. However, he said that he will not be using crypto as a source of leverage in the future. You can't afford to use leverage on Bitcoin, Ethereum, or any of the other cryptocurrencies when their 11-month volatility is 50%, 60%, or 20%. Even positions like Bitcoin and Ethereum are not centralized in the crypto economy, they're decentralized. This isn't just about American investors. When it comes to Bitcoin's value, it's a lot smaller than you might think. It's only $880 billion before the correction. Even if all of crypto's value falls below $2 trillion, it's still nothing in the world of finance. Thus, the sector's potential is extremely high. When policy is implemented and institutional investors in sovereign wealth are involved, real assets will begin to appear. Because it's widely distributed and most of the holdings are not held by institutions, a further 20% drop in Bitcoin's value would have little effect. Despite the hype surrounding Bitcoin, no institutions currently own any of it. And as an inventor, that's the call you have to make at a time like this. It's a chance to ask oneself or anyone else, do I want to own it after policy comes and all the institutions start buying it? If I believe in 3 years or 36 months that there will be a policy on Bitcoin, do I want to risk some volatility and buy it now at 24,000, 23,000 or 20,000? Whatever it's going to go down to. How can I tell? It's a buying opportunity if you believe in Bitcoin, but you can't be sure that you're catching the bottom of the market. Nobody gets to the bottom. That is never the case. Kevin believes this is what will happen. They're going to focus on a single issue and make it the subject of policy. To begin with, it will be stablecoin with a very clear set of policies. The same message appears on each and every one of the bills. Total transparency, 30-day audits, and no asset holding the coin for more than a year are what they demand. That means that, on average, T-bills will last for 7 to 8 months, and they will be backed by US dollars. A money market fund like Schwab or Fidelity will have the same type of rule in place once the policy is in place which is the ability to be a payment system. We would all be thrilled if this came to fruition. After the midterm elections, policymakers on both sides of the aisle will likely support this one measure because it ensures that the US dollar will remain the currency of default in perpetuity. That's all for today. What are your thoughts on Kevin O'Leary's statement? Join the conversation in the comments section below. Please click the like and subscribe buttons if you enjoyed the video. We'll see you in the next one.